Uh, meantime, the Department of Foreign Affairs in Australia is doing all it can to get Australian citizens and passport holders out of Gaza. We heard there there was some success yesterday. Abdullah Dalim was on the list to leave Gaza but decided to stay as his wife doesn't have an Australian passport. Penny Wong was asked about this particular case yesterday. This is what she had to say. One of the reasons, uh, which is why I wanted to break the numbers up into different categories, you've heard me talk about in excess of 80 uh, Australians, is we were including Australian citizens, permanent residents uh, and visa holders and their families because we're very conscious of people in this sort of situation. Shaheer Dallin joins me now. He is the son of Abdallah. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, first of all, it seems that DFAT and Penny Wong are well across this case. Have you heard from your father? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I heard from my father uh, last night. Yeah. Uh, he um, is, for the time being, OK, uh, but uh, the situation really is a day-to-day -day proposition. Uh, no, no one safe in Gaza is uh, it's quite clear. Yeah, it is uh, patently clear, Shaheer. So when you spoke to your father yesterday, obviously you had uh, communication with him. Was there any update on um, from DFAT that he'd heard on getting him and his wife out? Uh, DFAT, have a, uh, they've advised that they're in constant uh, communications uh, with the relevant authorities. Uh, they're speaking to the ambassadors in in Canberra, um, uh, the ambassadors for uh, Israel and Egypt. Uh, I've spoken to a number of consular officials in Ramallah uh, and Tel Aviv. Uh, my understanding is that DFAC is doing everything in their power to uh, ensure that uh, Samah uh, is included in the list of uh, foreign nationals who are entitled to leave the uh, Gaza Strip. The, the main concern I have is that there was a ministerial order in place and someone at the border has seen fit to veto that order. Um, and that causes me some concern. Mm. Uh, someone but, uh, obviously, um, oh, sorry to interrupt you, Shahir. Um, when you say that there's a ministerial order, uh, I mean, do you, do you accept that that's out of Australia's control in many ways? Are you talking about, you know, Egypt making that decision? Well, I don't know who's um, undermined that order. Uh, the the point I'd like to make is that um, I, Samah uh, is a, a citizen uh, in uh, Palestine. She has uh, an Australian visa. She has no criminal record. There are no antecedents. Uh, there's no security risk in my, in my view. Uh, th there is there is no uh, risk that uh, if she enters uh, Egypt that uh, she's going to become an Egyptian problem. Uh, the uh, Australian authorities have made it very clear that they intend on whisking away uh, Australian uh, citizens and their family members as soon as they cross the border. So it just concerns me somewhat that um, someone other than an Australian elected official is making decisions about who may enter uh, into uh, Australian states and territories. And this is in no way a criticism of DFAT. Mm. Um, I'm just highlighting a um, um, an alarming situation there yeah. at the border. On so many fronts, Shahir. Can I just uh, quickly ask you, what circumstances did your father and his wife travel into to Gaza? Were they there on holidays? Have they been there for quite some time? Oh, look, Dad um, uh, is a retired school teacher. He spent most of his working life in Australia. Um, and earlier this year, he um, decided to go back and spend some time uh, in the uh, territories uh, where where he was born many years ago. Uh, this is his second Nakba. He was driven out of the land uh, when he was just a young child. And as it turns out, he's now uh, witnessing the horrors of the uh, current atrocities that are unfolding before the eyes of the, the world. It's a very sad story. It um, certainly is. I, I yeah, I, I'd like to point out that Dad was faced with an impossible decision. Um, he was told that he could go through the crossing, but that unfortunately his wife was rejected. And he then had uh, he had to make a, a decision. He was faced with a moral dilemma and uh, effectively was torn between his sense of duty and uh, remaining with his wife 
or in the alternative, returning to Australia to be with his children. Um, and he made what I thought was the right decision. Um, it was an act of chivalry that um, exceeds all expectations. I'm very proud of Dad, very brave. As you should be. Shahir, we hope for a great outcome for your family and that you see your dad soon. Thanks so much for your time.